Barnsley, it's August, and it's raining. It's also, by accident, Barnsley Wakes Week, which they call Barnsley Feast Week, so that this is Feast Tuesday. Time of year when, as a bloke in a pub put it, the borough goes on migration to Blackpool. But in spite of that, in this marketplace, tomorrow, things will be humming. A pound and a half for two, Bob. Lovely Worcester's there, a pound and a half for two, surely. Come on, they are good, those Worcester's now. Anybody else? All fish off the bone now, made a lovely all of it, place. Now then, dear. There are going to be big changes in this marketplace soon. At least something new is going up in Barnsley. It's going to be one of the standards of the redevelopment schemes that have gone up all over the country. And looking at the model and the plans, I just can't tell if it's going to be any good or not. I've seen too many that look promising in illustrations and then look awful on the ground. It'll have a new market, both covered and open. But the sad thing is it's scrapped the shape of the old marketplace completely, and that was worth keeping. This is a pattern all over the industrial north. Let something run down till it's completely hopeless, scrap it and start again, instead of trying to keep it alive, trying to get clues from the existing shape of the existing patterns of people. This marketplace sums up for me the colossal puzzle that Barnsley is. Because this is one of the best and biggest markets in Yorkshire. And over there, there's a fairground belting it out. Yet, except on this side here, there's hardly a complete building around the whole marketplace. It looks as though the Russian troops have just been through. And this strange contrast of a lot of human vitality and no vitality in the shape of the town goes right through the place. It's a town of about 75,000 people, which is bigger than Gloucester. Yet there's hardly a street, really, that you'd recognize as belonging to any notable place at all. There's one or two mildly dignified Victorian streets. There never seems to have been any of the really grand Victorian public buildings. And the only one there is, the town hall, was put up rather sadly in the 1930s when they still had the pompous old style, but they didn't have any of the vitality. What's left of old Barnsley seems to have disappeared pretty quickly. There was eight years between the two editions of Buildings of England, Yorkshire West Riding, and the entry on Barnsley is pretty melancholy. It's all demolished, scheduled to be demolished, pulled down, about to be pulled down. One of the buildings that went was a free school built in 1813, quite a nice building. Now there's a YMCA there, it's worth looking at, not for the building itself, which I think anyone would agree is nothing special. The fact that it was put up by a bloke called J.C. Polson, who's in charge of one of the biggest architectural firms in the country, works from Pontefract near here. Well, that firm can put up good buildings. In Leeds, it's put up new baths for the city, which are pretty exciting, one of the best buildings in the north. And in Barnsley, oh, anything goes for Barnsley. Spilt milk again with the council houses on the hill behind. They could have been really good tall flats there for once, the kind that you might have seen in the programme in Karuna. And the village by the little church of the spire, Monk Breton, that shouldn't be just a repository for posh bungalows for the slightly posh citizens of Barnsley. But around here, it's about the only person or organisation that's really seize this opportunity. There's not anything local at all, sadly. It's the engineers that designed the M1, which runs on the other side of Barnsley. And there the bridge is leaping across from field to field, again embedding a completely different character in a landscape, have really caught the spirit of it. They've started to have fun with it, like the Belgians do.
I like Barnsley, but I wish it didn't look so much of a dump. See, this is the very centre of town in terms of energy. It's a railway station, the bus station right next to it. Immediately in a few yards, they through to the marketplace. There's an awful lot going on here every day, but it looks as though it's dying on its feet. It's epitomised by this blank space here, which used to be another station. It just been left blank, nothing's happening. Anything would be better than leaving part of the town to die like this. Car auction, anything, just, just to keep things going. Or the fence that should be here. Just concrete posts, not strung up. It's very often a matter of very little things. Like the way you do a fence, you don't just leave it. It's the little things that can make the town, <coughs> the big ones can be left to themselves if the small things are all right. And little things in Barnsley could be managed so easily. For example, between the bus station and the marketplace, there's a slice of railway viaduct. The arches are still there. One's open as a passage, the rest are blocked up. Why not open them all out and put a different thing in each arch? Why not use the derelict quadrangles at the backs of the streets here, which look like nothing at all, again to fit in more small shops? And Barnsley itself can show a pointer to the way it can be done. For there's a, an alley just off one of the main streets here, which looks like the entrance to one pub. When you get in there, you find there's another pub at the other end. You're part of a serial. You're in motion through the town, not just looking at a bit of disused stonework. On top of that railway viaduct there is now rough grass. It has the same effect, rather, as the cornfield on the edge of town I was showing a few minutes ago. It's a kind of surrealist, sudden, shock a, a different environment where you don't expect it. I reckon the Belgians would have used it. They'd have had camels up there or something. This result of almost a century of neglect of not bothering has made the people who are potentially a marvelous, sort of listless and apathetic too. I like the people, I like the place, I'm happy here. But I also feel like shaking them. Come on, do something. Don't just lie down under it didn't set out to make a set of films that would praise the continent and knock Britain. I'm a European person. It's all one to me. And in fact, most of the English places I really like to be in. Sometimes I don't like to look at parts of them. Yet as the filming went on, I became more and more convinced that the continent was winning hands down. And this can't be coincidence. Our urban self-respect somehow right on the floor unnecessarily so. I don't understand why. Because we've got the human resources, got the professional ingenuity, we've certainly got a magnificent set of older buildings to work with, and build from. We've got to get that urban respect up off the floor. It's a huge job. Something like restarting a blast furnace that's been cold for years. Can the young people, the gener generation after me, can they do it? I hope so, because we can't go on like this when we could go on like this. The vitality, the gaiety and madness of the marketplace at St. Nicholas, with everything going on. Just getting by isn't enough. We've got to stop existing and start living. <laughs>